Hello and welcome today. This is Roger and Cheryl coming to you in faith. Believing God is going to move for you today. Amen. We are on Lesson 17 of Now Faith. And uh, we believe God's going to move in your heart today as we agree with you in faith. And, and uh, just believe that God has great things in store. Uh, Cheryl, it's been a, a you know really good lesson that we are uh, probably coming close to the to the end of the lessons, but um, but God all through has built my faith and has encouraged me, and I, I see things that that not only build my faith but bring correction because sometimes um, you know we we are using faith improperly or, or inadequately, but. But then God begins to bring us back into focus. We, we ended the last lesson uh, with that, uh, is, is focusing on uh, the Lord, focusing on, uh, on the faith of God, setting our face like a plant. And a uh, tremendous uh, lesson. Uh, today, I want to invite you to, to get your Bibles, your notebooks, because everybody in the body of Christ, without exception, needs to learn about faith. There is uh, nobody, I don't care what your background, your doctrine, your theology, uh, if you don't have faith, uh, then, you, uh, uh, then you're not moving forward. If you don't have faith, it's not operating because without faith it's impossible to please God. We say that often because uh, we need to remember that, that whenever we begin to operate in faith, when we look at the Word of God, and we simply believe it, and I'll say it like the, like the Bible, we simply believe it with childlike faith. Uh, that means we are not afraid to act upon it. We are not afraid to engage in faith. And when we do that, then something begins to happen in our script, in our, uh, by the Word of God, in our spirits, is what I'm trying to say, <laughs> by the Spirit that is bearing witness with His Spirit, that we are the sons of God. There's there's something about that that begins to uh, cause me not to fo focus. That I, you know, it's been a favorite thing even in the churches. They, well, I'm only human, and as long as we focus on I'm only human, guess what? We're bound or we're limited by our human existence. But whenever we faith causes us though to focus on Him. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And we begin to focus on the fact that we're born again. We're new creatures in Christ Jesus. And faith is given unto us as a tool to operate as kings and priests in the earth. And amen, all that would preach. But I want you to just get, get stirred up about faith and know that God uh, wants to move through you, uh, for you and through you, for other people and for yourself uh, and and. Today we're going to pray for you, and then Cheryl's going to take off with the word. Father, we thank you today, God, for those that are listening. God, if anybody's listening that don't know you, God, today by faith, we call them, God, into that place where they call on the name of the Lord. They believe in their heart that God's raised him from the dead and confess him with their mouth. God, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to move for them. God, we thank you, Lord, when the word comes forth, healing is present. And God, as the word comes forth today, we thank you, Lord, somebody's believing God for their healing. And God, we thank you, Lord, they receive it by faith today in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing that rests on Cheryl and me. And we just focus on what you've given us to do. And we thank you, God, that you're doing mighty things in Jesus' name. Amen. It's on my mind today to say something, a couple of somethings. <laughs> um, we, Roger and I have heard lately from actually several different sources, even a source when we were in Thailand said this phrase, and that is that <clears throat> we're all broken people. We're all just broken people. And that came to me this morning, and Roger and I have both thought on it. And the truth of the matter is we are broken. That's why we come to Jesus Christ, because people are broken because of sin, because of sin nature, because of the deception of the enemy of our soul. But when we come to Jesus Christ, 
and we accept him as the Lord or the supreme authority from now on of our life, Amen. and we give ourselves to him, he makes us a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. And <clears throat> there is a process of growing, just like any baby that's born. Um, it's, you know, very often we say you don't give a toddler the keys to the car. Well, babies have to be nurtured. They have to feed on milk. And the Bible talks about feeding on the sincere milk of the Word of God. And then you pro progress until you can take strong meat. And I've thought so much about this. The scriptures teach us. Help me to be plain with this and clear, Father. The scriptures teach us that when we are born again, and we've accepted Jesus as I just explained, then we are new creations. And what that means is, inside of us, God has placed a new spirit person, or he's awakened our spirit to the things of God. He's brought us to life. Let's say it that way. God has brought to life our spirit. And the scriptures talk about the old man being dead or, um, you know, just the, the way we used to be. It's really all dead. The situation becomes that now we're a new creation we have to grow as that new new creation man or person. And that's one thing where faith is very vital to us. Because what happens is, Satan keeps bringing up old things that we did, making us feel like we're still that way. We're still broken. We're still sinful. We're still unworthy. All of those things are from the father of lies. They are not the truth according to the word of God. That is why the right dividing of the word of truth is so vital. We have to understand, you know, sometimes I just, I feel overwhelmed because here's this one Bible. Let me just get a Bible up here. <laughs> Let's use this one. Can you see this? <laughs> this is the Rotterham emphasized Bible. It's this thick. Now, not all Bibles are this thick, but this is a literal translation of the Bible that was done by Mr. Rotterham many, many years ago. And I just hold my Bible up sometimes and say, Father, there is so much in this one book. How will I ever get it all right? How will I ever get it straight in my mind? And I did that off and on for years. But that's why when Jesus went back to the Father, the Father and Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to us to live within us, to be our teacher. So we don't start out as adults. Growing up as a young girl, I didn't realize this for years later, I mean, many years later, that I, I came to a realization that I always felt like everybody expected me to already know everything, but nobody was instructing me. And so I stayed frustrated all the time and, and felt like I was so stupid, but Somehow, in my mind, it came across that they sh thought I should already know things. And even things very vital to just normal life and the necessities of living life in this earth, in this body, that I should have been taught, I was never taught. And so, there was just a lot of confusion in me all the time until... I began to understand some of the things that we teach. And um, when 
I really came to a realization that I am a new creation. I'm not that old person. I don't even think the way that old person did anymore. The only time that old person comes up is when Satan tries to bring back a memory. Thankfully, I'm mature enough now to recognize it instantly and say, um, that's not me, that's a dead person. Yeah. But it takes a process to get to that point. It takes staying in the Word of God to get to that point. And the other thing I want to mention in particular is that when we have a realization of something, um, you know, perhaps it is confusion, or perhaps it is an addiction problem, or it's, you know, what whatever it is that's bothering us. We need to realize that righteousness allows us to go directly to our Father. Yeah. Jesus said we could go to the Father in His name and talk to the Father and <clears throat> tell Him, be plain with him. It's not that God doesn't know it, but there's something about speaking the words out that brings deliverance. Father, I'm having a problem in this area, and I don't like it, and I don't want it, but I can't seem to overcome it. Roger started with overcome, overcome, overcome. The book of the Revelation talks about overcomers. We don't let the problem come over us until we're crippled. We overcome the problem by faith Amen. in the Word of God. What He says, we are more than conquerors. Not Satan. We are. Satan's defeated. Jesus triumphed over him. Made a display for all the uh, heavenly hosts to see, both demonic and angelic. The whole thing. Jesus put him on display and said, you are now defeated. So he is defeated. We have the right to use the name of Jesus. We have the right to bring every thought captive. We have the right to talk to our Father about anything. We have the right to overcome, stand in the victory which Jesus Christ has purchased for us. Amen. All right. So that was just an on the spur of the moment thing. It is very important for us to understand what Jesus has accomplished and completed on our behalf. He um, went through all of the abuse given to him, laid down his life. Nobody took it from him. He willingly offered it as a sacrifice for the sins of the whole world, every human being, and every nation at any time in life. It was offered to forgive all sin of all people. It was offered to open a doorway to be reconciled to God. Now, he completed everything. When he said on the cross, it is finished, that is exactly what he meant. It is finished. The work of salvation was finished. The work of salvation, which includes our healing, our deliverance, our prosperity, our happiness, um, our relationship with God, everything that salvation entails, bringing us out of darkness into his marvelous light, all of that was finished when Jesus said it is finished. That was his part. We started last week talking about God's part and our part. So that was God's part. Jesus completely obeyed the Father to the point of being crucified openly for all the world to see and know. And now his part is finished. It's completed. <clears throat> Our part, however, is still ongoing. Amen. Um, we don't be presumptuous that our faith forces God to do something. Uh, sometimes it comes across that way with books and with preachers that teach faith and talk about faith, especially if it's not balanced with the grace of God being involved. But it's not our faith that forces God. That's not it. It's not our fasting and praying and all of this stuff that forces God to do something at all. That's right. 
He's offered these things to us. When Jesus said it is finished, that brought about a whole host of gifts that are at our disposal now, like we talked about in a few other lessons. So, it's knowing what the Word says about our situation, knowing and being very clear and believing that Jesus paid for all of this. The, the price has been paid. We don't have to pay anything except attention. We need to pay attention to the Word of God. It tells us that in the book of Proverbs. Then we receive. That's our responsibility. Amen. Pay attention to what God says very closely. Receive the gifts and benefits. Um, Psalms 103 talks about that. Um, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who has forgiven all our uh, transgressions, iniquities, sins, and so forth, who healeth all our diseases, who... Um, I forget all the rest. Something, part of it is he renews our youth like the eagles. Uh, he gives us good things or good words, good thoughts, good gifts. Um, all of these things, it says, bless the Lord and not forget, soul. Talk to your soul. That's not a suggestion. That's a command. We are to bless the Lord with all of our soul and forget not his benefits. That's what Satan tries to do. He tries to make us think, you really don't have any benefits. You know that God is not going to do this. You haven't worked hard enough. Or whatever lies he tells you. Distinguish between what God's word says and what the enemy says. All right, so um, <clears throat> we respond in faith to what the word of God says. And we receive by faith his gracious gifts that he's given to us. Now, in saying that, we walk by faith, not by sight. So we don't always immediately see something. Sometimes we do. But um, we see, as Roger stated earlier, while we look not... at things that are seen for their temporal. But we look at the unseen things. So when we're looking at something we have faith for, we get a picture of it. And we see it as though it's already accomplished. Because in the spiritual realm, it is already accomplished. Amen. Now it has to come from the spiritual unseen realm into the earth and manifest. When it manifests, this brings glory to God. It brings glory to the Lord Jesus Christ because he paid for it. He wants us to have it. All right, so um, if we're, well, we, we talked in earlier lessons, and I'll just quickly reiterate this, that God is more interested in building our character than just giving us what we think we must have right now. And it may be a dire situation, but God knows that. You know, he doesn't wake up in the morning and say, Oh, my goodness, look what's happened on earth. He knows all this. The scripture says he, he knows everything, the beginning from the end, and everything in between. So God's not surprised at anything. And... The scripture also says he will not withhold anything good. Nothing. He will not ever, ever withhold anything good to those who walk uprightly before him. All right. So God's part is to give all that's good. Yeah. Our part is to walk uprightly before God. And we do that by receiving the gift of righteousness reading in the scripture how our behavior should be. And yes, it does tell us how our behavior should be. Grace is a teacher. Amen. It teaches us through the scripture what godliness is all about, how godliness dresses, how godliness behaves itself. And so um, 
These are things we learn as we're growing and maturing. Wherever you are in your walk of faith, wherever you are in your walk with God, don't receive thoughts that pressure you and tell you you, you just aren't mature enough. You just, you just don't know enough. You just Anything that starts with you just don't or you should have, those things are not from God. That's not how God communicates. Right. There's a big difference in something bringing com condemnation to you and the Holy Spirit convicting or convincing you of something. Because when Holy Spirit brings convictions to us where there's an area in our life that needs to change, He always does it and it brings peace. And we realize, you are right. This is hindering my walk with God. This is hindering me getting what I've asked for from God. And I want to change this and I ask you now to remove it from my heart and place in the right attitudes, the right thoughts, and I will get up and I will draw on your help, Holy Spirit, to help me walk uprightly mm -hmm. and keep moving forward. Don't receive all those condemning thoughts. God never sends, Jesus said it himself, I didn't come into the world to condemn the world. That's right. We're already condemning ourselves before we know God. But he came that the world through him might be saved. Amen. All right, so we must resist the temptations to doubt God or to limit God. One reason that God got frustrated with the children of Israel is the scripture says that they limited God and therefore God, they limited God by their unbelief. Therefore God couldn't do the things he desired to do for them. So we don't want to limit God. The scripture says with God all things are possible. There's nothing impossible with God. God spoke to me one time several years ago and said, in the kingdom of God there is no reality in impossible. Amen. That word does not exist in the kingdom. That's right. All right, so there is possibilities with God always and understanding his ways bring those possibilities into reality in our life so we must thoroughly absolutely absolutely and thoroughly believe and know that God loves me personally say that God loves me, God loves personally. me personally God loves me personally. Yes, me personally and he desires only good for me personally yeah. We you. have to make it a personal relationship with God. Amen. It's always been God's heart, and He has never, ever, never, ever desired bad for anyone. That's why He created the Garden of Eden with all the beautiful things, and life, life, life flew out of everything. And it wasn't until Adam and Eve ate of the wrong tree, the knowledge of good and evil, that things begin to change and death begin to enter the earth. But now we come to the tree of life who is Jesus Christ and life begins again in us. And that life continues to grow and grow and grow and flourish in us and cause our spirit, soul, and body to flourish. Amen. All right. Another... And um, one of the last thing is, is, it's so important to be thankful. To be thankful to God. And to verbalize that to God. Start your prayers by remembering the things God has truly done for you. And give Him thanks for it. Take your time. Give Him thanks for these things. He deserves it. Jesus Christ paid a big price to bring us into the family of God, our Father, to give us a Father that's absolutely 100,000% good. And we need to give thanks. Uh, there's some scriptures that have just in the Psalms, verse after verse after, give thanks unto the Lord, give thanks unto the Lord. His mercy endures forever. His mercy endures forever. We need to give thanks and believe that his mercy endures to every generation. There's no person that the mercy of God and the grace of God is not available to. Amen. 
All right, so I just kind of wrote this little prayer here, and it says, our approach at this point should be, Father, I believe through Jesus Christ that you have already healed me, you have already provided every need financially, relationally, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and I am deeply appreciative and grateful of these blessings and of your gracious kindness, and I receive that for which I'm believing in the name of Jesus. And you can put it in your own words, but it's a good way just Amen. to start with thanksgiving. Amen. And we're out of time, so I'll let Roger finish. <laughs> she always waits till we're out of time to give it to me. No, it's fine. I, that's, I, I'm glad because the... The word that's coming forth is so important. I'm going to go back, uh, Cheryl, and you really got into this uh, even in the end of it when you begin to talk about the garden and everything, but I want to go back to the thought uh, of, of we're all broken people. Um, and you know that we all were born in Adam, so yes, we started that. But I want to show you, more. I think it's Mark 4.11. I'm, I'm not exactly sure that's a, the that work verse but Jesus begins to outline the things he is anointed to do he said uh, and one of those things was bind up the broken hearted mm -hmm. and you know what I believe Jesus is well able to do a, 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 not just a good job but a perfect job of taking broken hearts broken people binding or repairing not even beyond re um, restoring because when you restore something you restore it back better than it was to begin with so when God took your life now you you have to totally give your life over to him uh, I think about Eve and you touched on the on the garden there and I think about Eve in the garden Eve was part of Adam Adam and Eve were one in fact Eve was taken out of Adam uh, and, and they were one, the scripture said she was bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh, uh, that they were, were one. So every right that Adam had in God, Eve had in God. But what did the serpent do? The serpent began to, uh, be, began to uh, cause her, speak to her, try to cause her to doubt what Adam said, because it was Adam that was telling I heard what God had said in the in the garden in the cool of the day, uh, and uh, so began to tell her God hath not said. So Satan was trying to cause her to doubt, even doubt God. Uh, so whenever she began to listen to that voice, see that's what takes away what takes away our faith is when we begin to listen to the wrong voice. How does the how does it come? It still comes in the garden of our mind, uh, which is our our soul or mind, will, and emotion, and and that that does happen every day. Uh, I don't care how spiritual you are. Uh, I hear people that I thought, well, man, they've got such great faith, they've achieved such great things, and then they begin to tell what the, you know how Satan comes at them, and the same way it comes at you. So we have to determine now. Eve already was was uh, part of the sonship of God in the earth because Adam was created son of God, a son of God, not the son of God, of course, but but a son of God. He already had every right that God had given him over all the garden, but Satan, the serpent, began to say to, to uh, her. Uh, you know, you won't die if you eat of this, uh, eat of this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Although God said that, and so forth. So that's the way. That's the way the enemy comes to convince you you're broken. Yeah. To convince you that what you're believing about God is broken. Your growth, yeah. See, if you and if 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 any voice comes uh, at you beginning to tell you you're less than what God says you are, guess what? It's there to deceive you yeah. and to, to destroy you. Turn it around. Stand in faith and go forward. You're not broken. Hallelujah, because Jesus is anointed to bind up the brokenhearted. And thank God I'm right here to prove I was brokenhearted, broken in every way, but Jesus 
came into my life, my heart, and now He's here to stay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for every person that's listening today, God, and I ask you in the name of the Lord, as Cheryl and I agree, God, we thank you, Lord, that, that you touch the brokenhearted, that you bind them up, God, and Lord, there's no broken people in you, God, because you have taken uh, taken those broken pieces and you put them back together, you bind up the, the broken pieces, and God, there's no schism in the body, God, we thank you, Lord, that you have brought us into oneness, into a wholeness in you. And God, we give you praise for it. God, as we stand in faith, believing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you, and uh, we appreciate you tuning in. Uh, if you can, share an offering with us. Uh, the information is on your screen, on your Facebook page. Uh, God bless you. We love you, and we appreciate you tuning in today. In Jesus' name.